This journey isn't the story of my coming to faith. It's the story of my learning to pray. But in the early days of me learning to pray for myself, it's very much the same thing. Growing up where and when I did, it was natural to assume that everyone who wasn't a member of another faith community was a Christian. And it was natural to think that the way that teachers who led us in prayer every day in school, whether it was infant school, junior school, and then high school, uh, were doing something that I could do on my own. I don't remember deciding to pray, but I remember doing it every night as I lay in bed. And I don't remember when it became obvious that me just saying the words to God in bed didn't seem enough, but I remember that it did. I do remember why going to church in the lovely chapel where my friends went to the youth group and where I had gone to Sunday school wasn't wanted what I wanted to do, however. I remember very much that I did not want fun. I did not want Christian friends and I did not want a Christian social life. I wanted God. I was afraid that fun and friends would get in the way of God. I was afraid that I would soon settle for what would be really nice and really great, but would be second best. So my dad offered to take me to Evensong at our local parish church, St Isons in Clinician in Cardiff. Now, you might not think that was the obvious way to encourage a 15-year-old to pray, but Dad and God were obviously in touch uh, because despite finding Evensong entirely baffling, I nevertheless found the peace that I'd not had in months. And later that night when praying as usual in my bed, my voice said in my head, I am a Christian and I was filled with peace and a gentle joy. And for the first time in a long time, when my voice had said in my head, I am a Christian, I believed it. Needless to say, I went back to Evensong every week and the following year I was confirmed and the rest is history. It took me some years, however, to work out exactly what had happened that night. It became blindingly obvious in a way it should always have been uh, when I myself was leading Evensong some years later as a parish priest and I was praying the second collect and I heard the words of the second collect as if for the very first time. Almighty God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments and being defended by thee from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God answered that prayer for me that evening, and in doing so, answered the prayer I'd prayed two years before in St George's Chapel. If you are there, God, let me know. God will always respond to our prayers. I think respond is a better answer, a better word than answer, although it comes to the same thing, because answer conjures up the idea of a Father Christmas like God, there to bring us the presents we want. Respond suggests a dialogue, a dance even. God leads us into a relationship with him and with our brothers and sisters in the faith. If we continue to pray as much when we are angry, disappointed, sad or bored as when we are happy, content and satisfied, then what grows is not our ability to pray, but our ability to live the complexities of our real lives in the presence of the God who loves us and who calls us in Christ into life.